I will be showing you how to set up a presentation in ProPresenter. And let's see how this goes. So once you've kind of, once you have ProPresenter all started up, and the way to do that is, this is a digital readout of the Stream Deck, but the Stream Deck that is actually physically sitting in front of you, you're going to find the page, usually switch the page and then click Open Programs, let it go for about 10 seconds, and it will open up all the necessary programs, which you can see down at the bottom. I have a whole other video on that and what, but let's continue on now. So you'll see that currently this coming week is June 5th, the Money Talk series. And so all of our, we keep a short record of our sermons and our um, different Sundays in this Sunday morning folder, just as you would expect our events, our stuff like team night or night of worship. So we just keep them separated that way. So you're going to want to find whatever week you're working on. If you're starting a new week, you would just duplicate the one from before and then um, you'll just have to update them as you need. So let's just talk through what I just programmed real quick. So June 5th, um, we'll start at the top. So pre-service, um, when you click this, it's going to start Spotify and everything, which we don't really want. But there's a bunch of slides that are going on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and you can see it dying there. Um, what's causing it, let's just start there. So you'll see all these M's and you saw a different set or different color M's at the top here at the pre-service. What those are, are macros. Macros are found in this bin over here. And one of those that's on these pre-service slides is you guessed that the pre-service slash post-service slides and you'll see in this macro, there's a ton of different things. If you check the actions out, you do this by right clicking. You see that there's a sermon timer that it, uh, it technically it resets it, but it's a 35 minute timer we keep for the sermon. It changes what the confidence monitor, the stage monitor looks like. It tells Spotify to come on via MIDI note. It tells us we want the pre-service look because we have two video outputs on this one. Um, the two video outputs, uh, one goes straight to our video switcher and one goes to Resolum, which controls our back LED wall. So it's, this is kind of how you apply different themes or what like layers of video you want to go where. This is kind of telling, this is two different timers for the online pre-service and online hosting moment. This is for during run through, it changes our program or our projectors to show the program feed, which would be like camera feeds in case the lobby is not showing that. Like at 7.30, we usually change the lobby uh, video over to a running, a, uh, an instance of slides that are running through and then a rehearsal timer. So. Um, again, these top ones at the top are your more important. These ones are called master macros. They actually group a bunch of different macros inside of them. It's just an easy way to keep track of them. And you can see that like this welcome master macro has a light cue for the welcome, has a resolume cue for the welcome and lower thirds. It's not really just lower thirds, but it's lower thirds is the gener generic way that I phrase any content, um, even if part of it's transparent, that needs to be on the slide that would overlay over a camera feed, whether that's full screen or just the lower third. Similarly, the closing, very similar. We have a lights a closing cue for our lights, Resolume, a closing cue, and again, the lower third or essentially an overlay cue that lets us send graphics over our camera feed. And the MIDI note, this one, uh, this is the second key. And so that is our Spotify control and turn Spotify off just in case we are out of order or something It makes sure that Spotify's off. One more example, sermon. Again, you have a light cue, a resolute cue, a lower thirds, and it starts the sermon timer and it makes sure that our Spotify is off. Now you might be asking, what am I talking about a lighting cue? Um, physically to my left, there's a lighting computer. It's an iMac that's set up right now. It is running both resolute and light key. I have it, I will, I am remoting into it, but you can see here, this is the, this is what it looks like. Um, this is Resolume, and so you'll see our Resolume set up. I've just set it up for June 5th, and it really is, it's a series of columns and rows. And so we have a pre-service column, and then this is kind of like layered from top to bottom what it's seeing. So this camera, that means it's getting a video input. So in this case, it's getting a full screen graphic from ProPresenter. You'll see in other rows, we have a scaled lyrics under the songs. That's where Resolume's taking a lyric feed in and then it's scaling it to a certain, like a, a certain size that we want it. 
Um, similarly, you have your backgrounds. This is for like during songs, how we do our colored backgrounds like you see down here. Um, this black separation layer, sometimes you run pixel bars. We don't want the pixel bars to be, if this is not completely, um, this is not opaque, we don't want the pixel bar like graphic to be shining through here. Or if there's nothing here, we want a black screen. We want something that separates it, kind of like a barrier. Anyways, you'll see then I have all of our main parts of a service. We can have up to 10 songs. So maybe we have three songs, but we have a color change in one of them. So I would then call that, you know, two, we can say, quote unquote, songs per that one song. So if song three might start red, then it changes to orange and then it goes back to red. So you can do all of that. Um, that's why we have a plethora of songs there including we have a welcome, a video queue. And so a lot of these are already formatted the way we need them. Sermon, closing, post-service, a default. In case something were to happen, we could click this and it would change our LED wall to go to that. Extra is just in case, you know, maybe we had, we had a preschool graduation a few weeks ago, so I don't want to change anything major, but I know we need an extra queue or for maybe a Christmas or Easter moment or a special moment, we could change it. Um, and then this is your preview window. So again, song one, like you can see, that's what our background's doing, and that's completely based off of our background. So again, whenever there's a macro that calls upon a Resolume queue, what it's doing is picking one of these columns. Then in Resolume, I just tell it what I want it to display. So then every time that ProPresenter queue clicks it, it knows it's this, and really it's just a saved file per week, or sometimes a standard one, but per week that I can go in and edit. Similarly, light key is getting queues. Um, this is kind of the digital readout of what our stage kind of looks like and what's happening now. But if I show you this, really what we have here, similarly a grid, columns and rows, and any queue that's touching, only one can be selected. You can see how they switch through. But we can have the hazer on separately because I might want to control that separately, but I know I only ever want one of these light queues on at a time. And then I have some extra cues over here, similar to Resolume for special events or other things. But if we dive into what's actually in one of these cues, you'll see here there's a lot of presets. And what I've done is that for every verse low key, it's the same effect, right? Maybe the lights are moving or fading similarly. And then in each color, I've just changed what the actual color is here, right? Light blue has a light blue color, but it's the same effect. So that's how we can change it. So if we change our stage design, I just go in and I'm really just making 10 or 12 different effects and I'm just applying them to this whole grid. Makes it really simple. Then things like our sermon, we do have an ad hoc, like this is the money talk sermon. So this is specifically made for the sermon queue, but I can go in and change it anytime. It just keeps things similar, but not over, like it's not overly complicated, but it's not too simple either. It lets us, it gives a good variation, but within reason. It's also very easy to keep track of. Um, so yeah, so that's what those actual macros in ProPresenter on this computer are doing. I'll give you an example. We'll go to our second song and we'll click this first cue and the actions here. So it's set up my worship set. So it's just setting up themes and setting up different things there. Resolume, we're gonna go to song two and that's because this is the second song in our set. And orange, I chose that I wanted it to be an orange verse upbeat cue. These are your macros. You could actually change them just by right clicking and editing them, or you can drag them using here. So all your cues are on the right side. But if we go back to our Resolume computer, you'll see that there it is, verse two, reverse upbeat, and it'll be on song two, just like that. And you'll see that this background is purple, but I have a color overlay on it that's making it orange. So it makes it real nice and easy to change colors if I like the background, but maybe not the color. Um, so yeah, let's get into designing the actual songs. You'll see here, there's a button here that looks as like these two arrows that are separated. It's the arrangement view. For now, we just use the original arrangement, but you can do it by week if you wanted to. This is the original arrangement. Um, and what we've done here is this is our setup queue. And so this slide is actually called setup, just like verse. The label itself is a setup queue. And in that, we have the planning center next, which will trigger our timer to go to the next one. We set up which resolute queue we want it in, which lighting queue we want it in. Then once we click lyrics, this is what it looks like on our video switcher with a camera overlay. 
and this is what it would look like on the LED wall. And we know that's true because now if we go to lyrics on the LED wall, that's what it looks like. So we can click through all these, and then you'll see here there's a chorus light cue. And the reason we don't just attach a light cue to a verse slide or a chorus like the first lyric is because if I attach this to, let's say it was verse one, then every time we did verse one, it would appear. In this song, we don't, but if the bridge, let's say we attach a bridge lighting cue just to this, it's gonna replay in both of these and this bridge. We don't want that. We wanna be able to change what it looks like. So to do that, we add a new slide by command click and then command shift N. It adds a slide to the right behind where it was blue. You wanna make sure it's blue before you do that. Then right click, group, and then you can just change this to whatever type applies. We could say it's a pre-chorus. And now it's a pre-chorus light cue. And now whenever you drag a cue, let's say it's green here, although we're not doing green. Now I could drag this into our actual arrangement here. These are like all the cues we have for all the parts of the song. And we can drag this into the arrangement view here. And so we could reuse it. That's similar to what I did here. So I don't actually need this. So I'm going to delete it. Uh, what you'll see here is that I, once I designed one chorus cue, I could then take it and put it in other places. This bridge cue, I was able to take it and put it in other places. This song is not a great example of that because there's kind of singular parts. But we can continue down again. This is the June 5th arrangement of our third song. So again, I'm going to edit. We want the third song, and I chose that I want it to be purple. And that is because our background that I like, I'll go ahead and bring it up in Resolume, is kind of a purple background. And it selected the verse low key, just based, that's completely just based on the song. That sets it up. We go into lyrics. Again, our pre chorus light cue, you can see it there. And you can see it later. It's the same cue. I was just able to drag it once we create it. Again, the way to do that is to go to the end of where you want the cue. So if I'm trying to make a verse cue, like I did here, a verse two cue, I'd want to go to the slide before it. So imagine this isn't there. Right click. So you're going to command, I'm sorry, command, click on it. So it turns blue. Right click. No, there's no right clicking there. Command. You're going to click on it so it turns blue. Command, shift, N. It adds a cue. And then you take that blank slot it just created and you're going to change the group to, again, we said verse two light cue. So there you go. Now you have a verse two light cue. We don't need that, but that's how you would do it. Um, similarly, again, once you kind of get out of these songs, you'll see what it does. I'll show you on the video. This is a baptism recap video, but you'll see these macros. This is our bumper video master macro. So it contains some other macros but it's just a really easy way to contain them all in one. So if we click on this, you'll see that it triggered the video here. There's sound in the background. And if I go here, trigger the bumper video and the bumper video here. And you'll see this is what it looks like on the LED wall. It is reoriented it so it looks correct on our upright LED wall. Same thing, if I click out of that, now we're in the welcome slides. It's very similar, right? It's doing the same thing. You'll see this looks kind of funky. Moving into our welcome. Ridge's name is here, but there's also a background. Now on our Resolume, I'll show you on the LED wall, there's nothing there. It just shows our life point slide, which is correct. The reason for that is because if I edit this slide, you'll see that this is slide content. This is a background. We can't do anything with it. This slide content is completely editable. That's completely via our look. This lower third look, I'll show you the layers. This lower thirds, when it's selected, here's our to our video switcher, our ATEM switcher, and here's to our LED wall. To our video switcher, it's sending slide content. What I just clicked on, it could edit, but it's not sending it to our LED wall. You can see here, this is what's going to our LED wall. If I click it, now that would appear in the bottom kind of portion of our LED wall. We don't want that. But we do want media, which is how the background is. To drag in a background, what you would do is, really, you're just dragging something in. I can show you this landing slide. You just take it from a finder window, and you drag it in. And now, that's what our background looks like. And again, it's not editable. You have to drag it straight in. 
what our slide content is. I'm going to undo that. But that's how we do it. So this would set up kind of our looks and our lights and everything. This is a lower third. And then this goes back to a blank because this one, this is if we have two hosts, you can edit, you can enable it and then edit who's hosting. Try five. That's another background. Life point slide kind of as a um, blank as a landing slide. And then again, this looks funky, but this is what the LED wall sees. That is what our video switcher sees. All this black would be a camera feed behind it. So again, similar to the text, if I edit this slide, this is completely editable. And I've put notes in here. So on the accompanist monitor, whoever like this week, Ridge, can see this is what's on that slide because it can't read it off of an image. Very similar things going on with the sermon. This action is the sermon master macro. And so again, in Resolume, it's triggered the sermon column. And that's what it's seeing on the LED wall. And then in light key, it's triggered the sermon queue. If you look at this, inside of that is the sermon kind of like what's custom, this green, which kind of matches up with the theme of money. And so I can go in and change that per sermon or per, per series. So again, these are all backgrounds, these landing slides. And this is transparent because our LED wall is only seeing just this portion of it. But then again, we need lower thirds for our, our broadcast and for our screens and our lobby and everything. So again, impulse buying is a lower third, but our LED wall is the uh, kind of the full graphic there. Confidence monitor sees what this says, and the way we do that is because, again, it can't read this image. This is just an image we dragged in when we were editing a slide, but I can type out or copy and paste what's in here, just like on a scripture slide. This is just an image, but so Nate, when he's preaching, can see this on the back wall on the TV, the confidence monitor. I can just copy and paste this. Again, so you kind of see where these are lower thirds and the lower third is just a label. There it is. It's just a label. And what that does is um, for the video director, they can see what the next slide is. So they need, they can see if they need to put on the lower third or not. It just in case they can always check it landing when the landing slide is next, they know that there's no content going to them. It's just LED wall. So it's a talking point. Um, and just to finish this out, the closing is very similar. It would be a closing macro. We go. So a lot of it is kind of one-to-one. -one. We try to make it as simple as possible. Again, you have Ridge doing the closing this week and I have what it, it'll read off what this says since this is actually editable text. If this was an image though, I'd have to type it in the notes. But it, since it's editable text, it'll show it on the confidence monitor. And lastly, it would be the post service, which again, is just free slash post service and it switches the lights and resolute over. And that's about it. And this will just cycle through and that will also turn on Spotify.